Hi everyone, uh, this is Fazluddin. Welcome to Technology Adda. Uh, today I am going to talk about uh, Kubernetes. Uh, most of the people are aware in uh, nowadays uh, what is Kubernetes. So as part of this session, I am going to talk about uh, uh, basics of Kubernetes, which will give you a quick idea of uh, what is Kubernetes and uh, what are the uh, basic uh, terms of Kubernetes and uh, what is the architecture of the Kubernetes? Okay, let's uh, we'll uh, walk through the all the slides and uh, you'll get some idea on that. Let's start uh, with the first line. Here uh, the list of topics uh, which I am going to cover as part of this session. So what is uh, Kubernetes and uh, why you need containers? Uh, what tasks are performed by Kubernetes and uh, why you use Kubernetes and features of Kubernetes and Kubernetes basics. And Kubernetes architecture and advantages of Kubernetes and disadvantages of Kubernetes. So these are the topics I'm going to cover. Let's move to the first slide. So our first slide is uh, what is Kubernetes? So Kubernetes is a container. Simply we can say that it's a container management system. So it has a cluster based containers which has the uh, deployment part and a lot of uh, scheduling things and many features available in that okay it is uh, properly from uh, google platform and uh, google uh, google kubernetes is a highly flexible uh, container tool okay and uh, uh, thousands and uh, hundreds of uh, uh, individual servers we can maintain as part of uh, Kubernetes, okay, and uh, it is highly flexible container tool, okay, and uh, consistently deliver complex application running on clusters, okay. So that is what Kubernetes, okay. We can say in a single word, Kubernetes is a container management system, okay, and it is developed by Google platform. Let's move to the next one. Uh, what do you need the containers? So this is really uh, interesting point okay so so today's uh, uh, internet user never accept downtime okay so what is the relationship between uh, never accept downtime for the containers so containers has a lot of features okay we can uh, deploy application in the different uh, uh, containers and uh, we can have the uh, load balancing uh, auto scaling there are many features okay which are there in that okay and uh, it is easy for the deployments for the developers also okay and they can easily edit and deploy the applications in the containers okay and uh, containers has become a preferred method for packaging deploying okay and update the web apps nowadays okay and uh, this these are very much uh, isolated uh, environment specific okay so containers will be always in isolated environments okay so that's why we need uh, containers let's move to the next line so it's performed by kubernetes so what the task it will perform normally so, kubernetes is a linux uh, kernel which is usually in distributed system normally it, it is uh, linux kernel based okay and it is abstract underlying hardware of the nodes in the servers and uh, and it offers a consistent interface of for applications that consume the shared pool of resources so these are the main uh, basic task it will do by kubernetes okay let's move to the next line why use uh, kubernetes this is also one of the interesting point kubernetes helps you to control the resource allocation and traffic management for cloud applications and microservices nowadays uh, many cloud based applications are deployed in kubernetes so so it is really uh, it has really very good features uh, where we can uh, deploy all the uh, microservices into that and handle easily and debugging also really easy into that and it also helps to simplify various aspects of service oriented infrastructure okay and kubernetes allows you to so assure where the, when the centralized application run and helps you to find resource tools you want to work with okay so this this is why we want uh, Kubernetes okay so let's move to the next line and coming to the features of uh, Kubernetes okay automated scheduling so it has a scheduling feature which is really very good 
and uh, self-healing capabilities. Self-healing means like uh, if one container is down and uh, uh, it will allocate um, another container and it automatically uh, makes sure that it will uh, recover the container and uh, it fixes the issues. And uh, automate rollouts and rollbacks also is a very good feature. And horizontal scaling and load balancing. So scaling is the main concept in the uh, deployment of the applications and load balance also one more really very good uh, feature which needed as part of the deployments okay which both it will uh, support and offers environment consistency for developments and testing and production which we already discussed in the previous slides and infrastructure is usually coupled to each components can act as a separate uh, unit so it won't like a tightly coupled environment it is loosely coupled environment okay so it won't uh, if you deploy in some kind of other container will not have any impact and it won't have any major deployment issues for the devops guys okay provides a highly higher density of resources and utilizations in that and offers enterprise ready features so enterprise ready features is a very good one and application centric management and uh, auto scale feature okay the infrastructure so auto scaling is really very good feature which supports by Kubernetes and uh, which everyone required in the current uh, uh, scenarios okay and uh, you can create uh, predictable infrastructure okay this is the main features of uh, Kubernetes let's move to the next slide Kubernetes uh, basics uh, in this slide we are just uh, going through the what are the basic uh, uh, features we now normally we will have concepts of uh, Kubernetes we can call it as like uh, the terms which we use cluster cluster is the one of the main term which we will use uh, in our uh, Kubernetes actually okay it is a collection of hosts that helps you to aggregate their available resources this includes RAM CPU disk and their devices into the usable board so it is a cluster cluster of uh, cluster based environment we can call it as and uh, master is in a Master, the master is a collection of components. Uh, it has a different different components in that and uh, which is a part of uh, Kubernetes. These components are used for all cluster uh, decisions. Okay, this is mainly for the decision making uh, thing for the clusters. Okay, it includes both the scheduling and responsive responding to the cluster events. Okay, and uh, coming to the node, node it is a single host which is capable of running physical and virtual machine. Okay, so normally with the deployments will happen in the node and uh, it's like a virtual machine. The node should run both Kube proxy and mini cube and kubelet, uh, which are uh, considered as a part of uh, cluster. Okay, and uh, coming to the namespace, it is a logical cluster or environment. Okay, it's mainly the logical cluster or environment and uh, used for scoping access or uh, dividing a cluster, which will call as a namespace. Okay, let's move to the next uh, slide. Uh, now we are in uh, Kubernetes uh, architecture slide. So you can see the this is a pretty this is a high level uh, architecture of the Kubernetes. You can see the master and uh, nodes, different nodes. Nodes contains the pods, different pods are there, and uh, master will have the API server, controller, scheduler, and uh, cluster. So we can see how Kubectl uh, uh, communication happens through. Uh, commands and uh, through uh, to the api server and from there how the request will uh, uh, go to that nodes different nodes so this is a complete architecture like how the internal process happens in the, the kubernetes okay let's move to the details in the next slide okay here uh, i'm going through the different uh, components of the architecture and uh, coming to the master node the master node has uh, various components like uh, uh, API server which we saw in the diagram also API server controller manager and scheduler and uh, ETDC and coming to the uh, detail of API server the API server acts as an entry point for all rest commands okay it is an entry point when you run the command the Kubectl command it will interact with the API server and then it will go into the, into the other services and uh, communicates okay and scheduler is in uh, scheduler uh, schedule the task to the slave nodes uh, it stores the resource usage information for every slave. Okay, it stores the information of the uh, uh, every slave nodes. It is responsible to distribute the workload. So, scheduler is the distributor of the work. Okay, 
So that is the main work of the shader and uh, ETTC is a component store, uh, component store configuration details and uh, write values. Okay. It communicates with the most components to receive the commands and uh, work. It also manages network rules and port forwarding uh, activities. Okay. It all, so, so ETTC is like an, uh, component store configuration. Okay. Uh, and, uh, write values. Okay. It communicates with the most of the components to receive the commands and work. Okay. And, uh, work and slave nodes. Uh, we will have a, we saw different nodes uh, in the architecture, right? So different node, one node, two node, three, okay. Slave nodes. Uh, so these are the worker nodes are another essential components. We contain all the required services to manage the network. Networking between the containers communicate communicate the with the master nodes which allows you to assign the resources to schedule the containers okay let's move to the next slide so he came to the uh, advantages of kubernetes and kubernetes uh, client and here i will see what are the advantages about relevancy kubernetes has some disadvantages also let's talk about the advantages here okay and uh, coming to the advantages, uh, easy organization of services with the pods. You can easily maintain the pods and uh, organize those and uh, we can drop the pods, we can create the pods, okay, and the deployment, okay. It is developed by Google, who bring years of value to the industry of experience to the table, okay. Google is a very big organization and uh, it really uh, has good support when we are using the Kubernetes and uh, so that's why I think we can use Kubernetes, okay. And uh, larger community among the container and orchestration tools. This uh, this has a very good uh, community support. Okay, in the containers features. Okay, and uh, offers a variety of storage options, including uh, on-premises, SANS, and public controls. Okay, and uh, attached to the principles of uh, immutable infrastructure. This is a very good feature. And uh, Kubernetes uh, can run on-premises bare metal, and uh, OpenStack and public clouds and Google, Azure, AWS. So Kubernetes can run many environments. So that is very good advantage of Kubernetes. And uh, now coming to the disadvantages, Kubernetes dashboard not as useful as it should be. And Kubernetes is a little bit uh, complicated and unnecessary in environments where all development is done locally. Okay, uh, it will be complicated and it is not uh, that, that i can't say is unnecessary in the environments but where it is not necessary we should not use this okay with a way if you have a very not that much complex uh, application like if you have a simple application there you can no need to go for the kubernetes okay and uh, security is not uh, very effective okay as from my understanding but uh, security features also there in the kubernetes so which are supportive but uh, not that much uh, very effective okay uh, so we are end of uh, this session i think i covered uh, all uh, basic uh, concepts of uh, kubernetes i hope you guys uh, like this presentation and uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, like and share the video with others so others also can get